Hello friends, what's up? Let us continue international economic policy and this is the 10th video of this particular lesson. And till now we have studied about, uh, you know, a lot of international organizations like, uh, you know, IMF and World Bank, WTO, etc, etc. We have looked at the different agreements in WTO. Today we are going to uh, look at, uh, you know, three important international organizations. Um, uh, you know, the first one is the Asian Development Bank. And uh, as the name itself suggests, uh, you know, it's a kind of, uh, you know, uh, World Bank only, but it's a regional uh, bank, development bank, and it provides loans to the, you know, poor countries, to the middle income countries for developmental purposes. So let us look at these, uh, you know, these institutions. So first one is Asian Development Bank. So Asian Development Bank is a regional development bank, just like the World Bank. Okay. Uh, it was established uh, on 19 December 1966. So basically, uh, the name is Asian Development Bank because it was, uh, you know, the leadership in establishing this bank was of the Asian countries, okay, Asian countries, especially Japan. Okay, so Japan was a was an Asian power, uh, you know, uh, in the 1900s. And uh, Japan had taken the leadership and it had established a regional development bank just you know similar to the world bank okay the headquarter of the asian development bank is in the philippines country okay uh, and it is in the city of mandaluyong okay mandaluyong and mandaluyong is in the manila metropolitan region manila is the capital of the philippines and uh, it's like a national capital region ncr just like we have delhi ncr so in delhi ncr we also have noida gaziabad gurgaon right so mandaluyong is just like a noida for manila okay uh, so the city is Mandaluyong and it's in the Manila metropolitan region that is the headquarter. Now who are the members of Asian Development Bank? So the members are all the countries which are the members of UN, United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. Okay, so this is a body of United Nations and all the Asia Pacific countries uh, who are the members of uh, you know this particular commission are also the member of Asian Development Bank along with this non-regional developed countries okay the developed countries meaning countries like usa uk etc so developed countries and non-regional meaning which are not asian okay not in asia so not non-asian countries means non-regional okay so these are the members so as on today as on 2023 uh, you know there are 68 members and the voting share is as follows like this so Japan has the highest vote share uh, and USA also has the same number of vote share. So Japan and USA hold the highest number of vote share, equal vote share in Asian Development Bank. Then the second vote share is held by, second highest vote share is held by China. Then third by India, fourth by Australia and so on. Okay, so you see that India is also an important player in the Asian Development Bank. Now, what does the Asian Development Bank do? It works in the social development. Okay, so it provides loans, financing to the projects which are into the field of education, poverty reduction, health, sustainable growth, etc. Also in climate change, management of natural resources, etc. So one example would be say, for example, if we, you know, there is a project going on uh, to upgrade the Anganwadi centers in India. Okay, Anganwadi centers in India. So basically it is related to education and child care. So, uh, you know, it may provide loans for this particular uh, purpose. So it is basically for socio-economic development of the poor countries and also to fight climate change and other environmental challenges. Whenever the sustainable word comes, you have to keep in mind the environment. Okay, so sustainable growth means that we have to uh, consider the environment also that environment friendly development should happen. It provides loans for financial sector development also. Financial sector development meaning loans for, uh, you know, development of bond market, share market, equity market, different kind of financial sector development. Infrastructure development, okay, also to private sector. So it also provides loans to the private sector. This is also important. Then it provides hard loans. Hard loans meaning the interest rates are commercial basis, okay. Interest rates are commercial interest rates, meaning little bit higher interest rates. So hard loans on commercial terms to middle income countries and soft loans, soft loans meaning very low interest rate, okay, very low interest rates. 
like 0.5 percent 1 percent etc like this to uh, to the countries uh to the poorer countries in asia okay so it it uh, it is involved into all these activities so i'm just giving you a background of all these institutions yeah we have seen about the asian development bank adb it is there in news all the time because you know adb has provided loans to india also so you know whenever uh, you know you read any news related to asian development bank this background information should be there with you you have to definitely follow the current affairs also as to what is going on which projects it is funding and you know if there is any new uh, maybe credit line issued to india or any state in india then you have to keep that in mind okay but i'm just giving you the uh, background of these institutions then the second organization that we are going to study today is the asian infrastructure investment bank aiib so see again the name will tell you that it is uh, you know the bank which is established with the leadership of the asian countries okay it is the bank for infrastructure investment okay so it provides loans for infrastructure development okay infrastructure means roads bridges buildings power infrastructure okay uh, electricity infrastructure digital infrastructure it can be anything so it is it provides loan for infrastructure development so it's a multilateral multilateral meaning uh, involving many countries okay many countries are involved it is a multilateral development bank because it provides loans for the developmental purpose and uh, you know so it's a kind of international financial institution because it provides loans now who are the members of asian infrastructure investment bank members are from the countries in asia europe africa oceania means you know oceania and australia it is a you know uh, region near australia then south america north america so there are total 106 members including 14 prospective members so these members are just you know they are the prospective members meaning in future they can become the full members so there are total 106 including 14 pro prospective members so you see in asia asian infrastructure investment bank aiib the members are from almost all the continents right south america north america asia europe africa oceania etc uh, but the leadership is of the asian country which is uh, you know china i'll tell you that so one thing you should know that usa and japan are not the members of aiib okay usa is not a member of aiib japan is also not a member of aiib it is leadership of china okay china and india so china and india have taken the leadership to establish the aiib and it is very recent okay in the recent you must be knowing that china and india are emerging superpowers in the world so you know very recently in this century only uh, this aiib was established and it was to you know to balance the dominance of america and japan and you know developed countries into other institutions you must be knowing that in world bank imf and uh, you know even wto uh, w uh, and you know a asian development bank adb also all these countries are dominating usa japan and you know uk france all these countries but in order to counter these uh, you know uh, dominance of these developed countries india and china have taken this leadership especially china so uh, i'm just giving you the background of this key why aiib was formed now headquarter of china is in beijing beijing is the capital city of china okay beijing is the capital city of china and it was established on 25th December 2015 you see very recently okay now voting power is like this China has the highest voting power India has the second highest and Russia is the third highest so you see China and India have the dominance on AIIB and it lends for infrastructure development projects okay so these things you should keep in mind now the third organization that we are going to study today is a new development bank NDB okay NDB is a new name for BRICS development bank so you must be knowing the BRICS countries right BRICS is an international organization multilateral organization which involves five countries so BRICS is an acronym okay BRICS is an acronym for you know the name of the countries which are there in the BRICS organization so it is Brazil Russia India China and South Africa so this BRICS had established a development bank just like the AIIB okay it is also a development bank uh, aiib or adb okay and it was established by the leadership of the brics country that's why it, is, it was known as brics development bank and later on the name of the brics development bank was changed to new development bank ndb okay it is also a multilateral development bank and to support what is the purpose of ndb again to support public or private projects see here private projects are also 
supported so they provide loans to private projects also meaning project of the big companies like maybe reliance tata adani ambani you know these people so they will provide loans for private projects also and they will provide lo uh, you know financing in the form of loans in the form of guarantees also credit guarantees you know already right if somebody is taking loan from a bank or any other financial institution then guarantees are required so credit guarantee companies are also there so it also provide a uh, you know guarantees for the loans then equity participation it can directly you know participate into the equity and purchasing of share of you know some private company or any public company also and other financial instruments other financial instruments mean any other financial instruments like you know derivatives bonds etc so they can support you know financially in so many different ways for these projects for both public meaning government projects as well as the private projects now who are the members of ndb members include obviously the brics countries brazil russia india china and south africa along with that bangladesh egypt uae meaning united arab emirates and uruguay okay these are the four countries apart from the brics countries who are the members of the ndb as on today okay as on 2023 these countries are the members and you should note here that in 2023 republic day the chief guest for the republic day the foreign dignitary who had come to india was the president of egypt okay president of egypt headquarter of new development bank is in shanghai china okay shanghai is a financial capital of china okay just like mumbai is a financial capital of india shanghai is the financial capital of china now brics countries signed the ndb agreement okay they decided to form the ndb bank the brics bank on 15 july 2014 in fortaleza brazil okay so a meeting was going on of the brics countries in fortaleza city of brazil and there they signed the ndb agreement that's why it is also known as fortaleza agreement okay the agreement by which new development bank or the brics development bank was formed it was known as fortaleza agreement so just keep this this word in mind it can come in you know mcq first president of the new development bank was kv kamath he was an indian he was appointed in 2015 so this is also important then objectives of new development bank is again to promote infrastructure and sustainable development projects to partner with other multilateral development institutions like aiib adb etc okay and national development banks now national development banks meaning example is nabard so nabard is a development bank which provides loans and you know financing for agriculture and rural development projects then there is sidbi sidbi is for you know small industries then you know there are so many development banks national development banks maybe um, you know which provide for uh, which provide loans for you know different developmental purposes so ndb can partner with such organizations also so basically uh, i have given you a background here about the three organizations which is adb aiib and ndb i hope it is clear to you now what is the role of each of these who are the members okay just keep one thing in mind that america and japan are not the member of aiib and ndb both okay it is only the member of adb so we should just keep in mind from the geopolitical point of view also okay obviously from the economics point of view you know these things are important but uh, you know whenever it comes to international economic policy we have to look at the international relations also so this can be useful to you in your gs2 paper also okay in the polity part or the international relations part also just keep these things in mind how you know over the period of time international organizations are evolving and based on that how our international economic policy is evolving okay so that's why this lesson is important for this particular lesson okay uh, so we will end this video here if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section thank you